In our previous videos, we looked at how to make histograms and Pareto charts. As we continue looking at tools for quality management, we're going to focus in this video on control charts. Now, when we look at control charts, we are looking at measurements over time. And it's important to distinguish this from, say, a scatter plot, where we're looking at some other variable like temperature um, and how that impacts our production or complaints or issues. So a scatter diagram, we look for relationships and we try to find the line that best fit to kind of predict that relationship. And so you can check out the associative model videos for how to create that scatter plot and how to fit that and find that relationship. What we're focusing on here is control charts. So we've collected data over time and we're not fitting a regression, um, a linear model or a polynomial here. What we want to look at is the data we've collected and whether or not it exceeds some upper and lower control limits. And so we would need to decide how much variability we're willing to allow uh, as we look at measurements over time. So here, for example, in this video or this picture on the bottom right, you can see the fill that we're allowing. So let's say we're a production company, we're making bottles of sauce. Uh, ketchup, whatever, right? So as we're filling ketchup bottles over time, there's going to be some variability in how much ketchup ends up in each bottle. We have a target and then we have an upper and a lower control limit. So then we look for anomalies. We're looking for any type of variation that's too extreme, too overfilled or too underfilled. So let's actually look at an example. To do this in Python, we are working through our Python workbook. So go to drstephpowers.github.io slash management dash in dash Python, and we're building some control charts here. Uh, once you click on this, it takes you to GitHub. And once you are in GitHub, open in Google Collab, make sure you sign in, make sure you save a copy, and that allows you to edit uh, the document and run the code. So I'm just going to go to the version where I am signed in. And this is the same workbook from the histogram and the Pareto chart. So just scroll down to the control chart at the bottom. So let's suppose that uh, we are filling bottles with sauce and we have collected uh, four samples. We collect four samples each day. Okay. And so we have a lot of data here. You can see here are our four samples and you can see day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Now, in order to do this uh, work, we're going to need a couple of different uh, packages. We're going to need to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT to do our graph. We are going to need to import pandas as PV in order to uh, manipulate and create a table of data. And we're going to need to import numpy as np. Okay, so let's go back down here. All right, so the last package I'm going to need is to import statistics. And this is so I can have it calculate a standard deviation, uh, which is not already built in. And so I want to be able to call a calculator for standard deviation. So I'm going to import statistics. All right, let's enter our data and put it into a nice table so that we can see it really clearly. So here we have sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, and these are the samples collected over time. So we'll just dump those into the system. And then we want to turn that into a table. So we're going to use that pandas. We're going to create a data frame, so pd.dataframe. And when you use the command list zip, what it does is it takes the information that you've given here and it turns each one of these into a column. So we are doing list zip and then our sample one, two, three, four, and then we want to give it names for our columns. So sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four. All right, so when we do that, we can call our data frame and you can see this nice table here, uh, sample one, two, three, four, and then this is day zero, day one, two, three. Uh, Python starts their counting at zero instead of one. If we really needed to have it say day one, day two, we could add another column uh, with that information. Since it doesn't actually matter here, uh, we'll just leave the index as starting with zero. So here we have our data. What we want to know is how much variability there is as we're filling each day. And in this case, the data we're looking at is hundreds of an ounce 
over the 16 ounces that should be in each bottle. Okay. All right, so we have our data. Now, in order to create this control chart, we're going to need to find this target level, unless we already know what that is. And here we need an upper control limit and a lower control limit. Now, in this case, the target is not the 16 ounces. Uh, we're okay with there being more than 16 ounces. 16 ounces is what it says on the bottle when we sell it to customers. Uh, so we're going to allow for more variability than that. If the challenge, of course, is that if this was 16 ounces, anything that fell below it, you would essentially have to throw out all those bottles because of uh, your misleading uh, label that says there's 16 ounces. So we have much lower than this is the 16 ounces itself. And uh, what we're allowing here is the variability above another level. Okay, so we would automatically flag things that are less than 16 ounces. When we look at the data here, you'll notice this data, none of it is negative. So these are hundreds of an ounce more than 16 ounces. Anything that was a negative number, that particular product would have to be thrown out because it doesn't meet uh, the minimum requirement. What we're focusing on here is variability. And so what we'll find instead is we will find uh, the average for each uh, day, and we will look at how much variability there is each day from a global average. So we're going to add a column to our data table here that averages the samples across the day. So in a couple minutes, we'll just look at each of the samples within the day, but let's start by looking at the daily average. So we're looking at how much variability there is day to day. And so if we have four samples in day zero, we want to find the average for that day. Maybe there's an issue we need to identify with certain days of the week where things aren't working so well. Maybe we've gone too many days without maintenance. Maybe uh, that staff that day are less trained. Uh, so we're looking for things that might indicate issues that we need to resolve. So we start by creating that new column. So we'll call the column average. And we're going to take our data frame, we call df, find the mean, and we're going to do axis equals one because we want it to calculate the average per row. If axis equals zero, then you're averaging across, then you're averaging for the column. All right, so df average, create that. And then when we do this, it creates that new column called average. So you can see day zero, the average was 63.25. And for day one, it is 33.75. So obviously variability here. And in fact, day six is quite skewed by sample number two. And so the average that day was 113 hundredths of an ounce over the 16 ounces that are supposed to be in the bottle. So we're quite overfilling here on day six. Uh, we are very close to that 16 ounces on say like day one and day seven, uh, where there's much less above that 16 ounces. All right, so to create our um, target and our upper and lower control limits, we're gonna first find the global average. So we're gonna average the column that has our averages. And we can do this by taking that average column and simply finding the mean, okay? And if you want to find out what that is, you just type that name, globe average. And you can see here that the average we're overfilling is 54.58. Okay. Then we can find the standard deviation. How much variability is there in those daily averages? So we need to use that statistics package, statistics.standardDeviation. And then we'll find the standard deviation of those daily averages. And if we want to see what that is, we, of course, just type in sdev, stdev here. So if our average across all the time is about 55 hundredths of an ounce over the 16 ounces, the standard deviation, so that average variability, is going to be 21 hundredths of an ounce. Now we want to turn this into upper and lower control limits. So we want to capture 95% of the time we are within what range? And so here we're going to take two times the standard deviation. This comes back to our empirical rule. It says two standard deviations is 95% of the data. 
So we're looking for the outliers, those that fall outside of this two standard deviations from the global average. So the upper control limit is going to be that global average plus two standard deviations, and the lower control limit is going to be the global average minus two standard deviations. We get an upper bound and a lower bound. Okay. Now we simply just want to plot this information. So we're going to do plt.plot, and we're going to plot those daily averages. We're going to mark them with dots. And there's going to be no lines, just dots. Then we want to add a horizontal line with that upper control limit. We'll make it a dash line. We'll make it black. So because we named that upper control limit calculation before, we can just put UCL. And we can create a horizontal line for that global average. Color black, line style dashed. This is going to be that average across all the days. So it's our average of our averages. And then we have our lower control limit. This is the horizontal line. It's going to be dash. It's going to be black. And it's going to pull that calculation where we took two standard deviations below that global average. Let's label the y-axis uh, hundreds of an ounce over 16. That's the vertical axis. And here, when it comes to the x-axis, we want it to not be fractions of a day. We want it to be whole number days. So we put this line in here, locator params, and then we're applying it to both because we might as well have the labels on the vertical and the horizontal axis be whole numbers. So that's this integer equals true. This turns this into whole numbers. I'll graph it again in just a moment with it turned off and you can see. X label days. So we plot this. And we get a graph like this. Here are our days. Each day, this is the average of the four samples. And this is the global average. So on average, we're hitting, remember that 55, hundredths of an ounce over 16 ounces. And then we can see, what was that, day six, where that average was 100 and something, 113 hundredths of an ounce over 16. So day six has an issue. We way overfilled. Uh, the bottles on day six. So when you look at a control chart, you're looking for what's falling outside of the bounds, what's an anomaly. You're also looking for, is there some kind of pattern here that would indicate perhaps that there is some kind of relationship to time? You know, I said certain days of the week, for example, might be problematic where we overfill or underfill. So in this case, we're comparing it to a global average and an upper and a control limit that cover 95% to identify the anomalies. You can also use your control uh, chart uh, if you have a specified ideal number here, in which case this is not the global average, but that target. We can't do that with our bottles because if we're falling below 16 ounces, then we have to scrap that product. Uh, so we're allowing some variability here, but it's all above the 16 ounces. If instead you had a target um, and you had more discretion over it, so if we're looking at, um, oh goodness, uh, number of sales per day, and so we had a target number of sales per day and we were looking at how much variability there was in the sales per day, then we could have this, this center here be that target as opposed to just a global average. And then in which case you say, how much variability will I allow? We've allowed two standard deviations in each direction. You could make that tighter, less variability. One standard deviation covers 68%. Three standard deviations allows for much more variability. And then you're looking at 99.7%. So you can adjust these bounds depending on how much variability and what you're looking for is the ones that fall outside. Now I said a moment ago, what if we took this piece out of the graph here? So if I just remove this and run it, what you would get is that it puts these fractions of a days on the bottom, which is not relevant to you. So that's why that extra line there is allowing for the labels to be whole numbers. Now in this case, we were looking at our control chart in terms of the averages per day. But perhaps you want to narrow it down even further and look at each sample. So we took four samples each day. We could plot all of the data. So here we're going to plot sample one. It's going to be one color. You can specify what that color is if you want. I haven't here. And then we plot sample two. 
Again, we're making them dots. There's no lines attached to them. By putting them as those four different rows of commands, it's gonna make them four different colors. You can specify what color you want uh, by simply adding here, color equals blue, okay? So here we have our four sets of samples and then the rest of the commands are the same. We have the horizontal line that goes with the upper control limit, again, two standard deviations, what we did here, and our center, our ideal. This one is the global average, as we just talked about it a minute ago. It could also be uh, what is expected um, in your uh, process. And then we have our lower control limit. And again, the x-axis we want to have um, whole numbers, and then we have our labels. So we'll just run this. So you can see I specified that this particular one is blue, and that's why it's blue here. When I take that off and let it decide, I think it turns those to orange. Yeah, so you can specify if you want a color or not. So notice here, what we have on day six is we had one particular sample at 300 that is super skewing that day six data. And what we would look for in this is not only do we look for samples that are outside of those upper and lower control limits, but we would also look for, is there a pattern to the samples? Maybe we sample our production line four times a day. And if all of the ones that are outside the upper and lower control limits were all the same color, then perhaps there's an issue with the people doing the quality checks. Uh, in the sampling methodology, maybe the methodology used by, say, sam the morning sampling team is not consistent with the afternoon sampling team. And so maybe there's something there in our process for checking quality uh, that's causing the issue as opposed to the production line itself. So we can actually dive deeper by looking at each sample within the day in addition to the average per, per day. Uh, so you're looking for what falls outside of your upper and lower control limits, and you're trying to ask the question why. Why is this point here? And then this leads to further exploration. So many of our graphs are part of our exploratory data analysis to get us to ask questions as to what's happening, and in this case, particularly related to quality. What is happening with quality? Is it in the way we're assessing the quality? Is it the quality itself? And what is causing those quality issues?